Today, we're diving deep into the world of off-grid living and exploring how 3D printing could completely transform the game. Whether you're a homesteader or someone dreaming of a self-sufficient lifestyle, we are going to talk about how 3D printing can open a vast amount of opportunities for the future of self-sufficiency. So I'm sure if you are already watching this video, you probably have the gist down of 3D printing. But for sake of formality, let's review the basics. 3D printing is also known as additive manufacturing. It is a process of creating three-dimensional objects by layering materials on top of each other. Unlike traditional subtractive manufacturing methods that involve cutting or molding materials into the desired shape, 3D printing builds objects layer by layer from digital models. Nowadays, it is completely reasonable to buy a 3D printer that is capable and competent of making models, parts, tools, whatever you need for around the $400 mark or less. One of the key strengths of 3D printing is its ability to provide custom solutions. How does 3D printing address specific challenges faced in off-grid living? From designing water efficient systems to crafting custom tools or organization, 3D printing offers tailored solutions that can give you the part you need from a self-sufficient lens without relying on a parts manufacturer. Think about it. Prior to 3D printing, you would be limited to constructing things out of wood, aluminum, or steel. But utilizing the ability to create small or medium-sized intricate parts that can range from being highly complex to extremely simple has just never been a thing. So what are some examples of 3D printed essentials for off-grid living? You could print water collection fixtures, gutters, or valves for your specific application. Or if you need a solar panel mount and you just don't know where to get it or the store doesn't have the specific type of mount that you need, this is also something that could be 3D printed. You could also print custom organizers such as boxes or bins that would fit a specific part that you need. So at this point, you are probably asking, what is the point of this video? I would say the point of this video is to get you guys thinking about the possibilities and then also possibly even 3D printing if you haven't done it before. For the next couple of minutes, we are gonna go over three points that kind of address the question, is it possible to 3D print parts and use them as replacements for the parts that you could buy at a store? The three points that I'd like to address are feasibility, cost and practicality. To address the first point, feasibility, let's talk about how easy it is for the average person to get into 3D printing in the first place. And then on top of that, once you have a 3D printer, how easy is it for a normal person to find the designs that they're looking for? And then do they have to design their own designs in order to find what they're looking for? Firstly, the 3D printer. While there is a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to 3D printing, most of the things that you need to know that can be difficult in the beginning can be found either through YouTubing or just a little bit of research. More often than not, printers these days are sold ready to print out of the box, and if they aren't, it's very little assembly required, and usually the quick start manual that comes with them gets you printing pretty quickly. I would say the hardest part to that by far is the initial leveling of the bed and then continuing to level the bed if anything causes it to go out of level or you move the printer. Um, these are all things that you need to consider, but by far the hardest thing that you have to face in the beginning, I would say, is making sure you have a really good bed level so that you can get the first layer down uh, nice and smooth and level like it's supposed to be, which is where the rest of the design builds on top. Now we get to designing. There are multiple websites that offer thousands and thousands of free designs. Chances are if you have thought about 3D printing something specific, someone else probably already has too. This makes finding the right design uh, extremely easy, or does it? In my opinion, you get the most enjoyment from 3D printing when you design the stuff that you actually 3D print. Not only does this allow you to create literally down to the millimeter the part that you're trying to print, it also allows you to become familiar with designing in general which in turn will give you the experience that you need to tackle more difficult and complex parts in the future. Even better, you can use programs like Fusion 360, uh, which they offer a free personal use uh, license that you can use Fusion 360 for free. 
and it offers a plethora of tools and uh, complex software tools that allow you to create pretty much whatever you can think of um, as long as you have the measurements for it. The caveat to this is Fusion 360 can have a steep learning curve, but the plus side of this is that there's multiple hundreds of, of tutorials on YouTube that you can go on and do research on and watch people do pretty much exactly what you're trying to do most likely. And you can take that information, go back to Fusion 360 and design whatever you're trying to design. Another plus side about Fusion 360 is that you can export in STL, uh, which is the file format that you need to um, import into your slicer, which is Cura in my, in my scenario. And then I can use Cura to slice the design into the desired print settings that I want, which I can upload to the printer and begin the print. Overall, I have full faith and confidence that you can take this on. It is not that difficult. Um, it could, could be difficult for some people, but if you're willing to take the time to do the research and watch the YouTube videos, it is not something that you are incapable of doing. While you most certainly will want to pull your hair out at times and call it quits, whether it be with designing or failed prints, um, it's definitely not something that is not doable. I can assure you printing that perfect part that you spent hours designing and then hours printing, it is well worth the pain and suffering that you might have to go through to finally get the perfect part that you printed and then actually see it being used for the intended purpose that you printed it for. It not only is extremely rewarding, but it also fuels you to start your next project. The next point that I would like to address is cost. Is 3D printing sustainable on my piggy bank? And is it more cost effective to purchasing parts in a store? Without a doubt, I would probably say yes. And to answer this question more thoroughly, let's look at three specific categories that we can kind of form a cost analysis on. The first is electricity, the second is printer cost, and the third is filament. To address the first point, which is electricity, Let's take my Ender 3 S1 Pro for example. During its initial heat up, uh, it can pull upwards of 300 watts during that initial heat up period. After the heat up period is over, it kind of stabilizes to around 70 watts. For an hour long print, let's just say that it uses an average of 120 watts. Considering where we live, we are charged about 15 cents per kilowatt. Considering an average of 120 watts, um, we would use about 1.8 cents or 2 cents per hour uh, that I use my Ender 3 S1 Pro. If you were to do a 10 hour print, this would equate to 20 cents. If you were to do a 20 hour print, this would equate to 40 cents and so on. Remember, these are rough estimates. However, I think the point that I'm trying to make about efficiency and cost effectiveness with electricity usage is evident, which leads us right into the next point, which is cost of the printer. Now, the cost of the printer will truly depend on your needs. For example, my Ender 3 S1 Pro was around $400, and it really does meet all of the requirements that I've asked of it. This would be both in quality and capability. Of course, you could spend closer to the $1,500 mark for a Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon, uh, which will get you a, a built-in camera, an app. It prints faster, it prints better. However, the trade-off is that it's about $1,500. At the end of the day though, if you want the best quality for the cheapest price tag, uh, the Ender 3S1 Pro is what I have and it has done all that I've needed it to do and more at the quality that I've asked it to do it at. Additionally, you have to take into account parts uh, that you need for maintenance and upgrade parts are going to be significantly cheaper for the Ender 3 S1 Pro and parts that you would need that would break on the Bamboo Labs are gonna be more expensive. And with that, we're on to our next point, which is something that all printers have in common, which is filament. This is the third and final kind of cost breakdown and thing that you have to take into account when you start 3D printing. And it really isn't as bad as you might think. An extremely popular and rightly so filament that everyone seems to have respect for, prints great and is strong, is eSun's PLA Plus. For around $23 a roll for 2.2 pounds or one kilogram, you get high strength filament that feeds directly into your extruder for high quality prints. Now you are probably asking, how far can you get with one kilogram of PLA plus? And the answer is pretty shocking. Uh, you can get quite a bit of prints out of a one kilogram spool. Let's take this Echo Dot stand that I am currently selling in my Freedom Reigns Etsy store. I can print one of these with 57 grams of filament. Considering there are a thousand grams of filament in one spool, this means that I can print almost 18 of these for $23. 
This brings the cost of filament to produce each of these stands to $1.30. Now consider that part that you drive to the store to buy for $30. If it's around the same size as this, you could be printing it for quite literally a fraction of the cost that you would buy it for and that doesn't include the gas money needed to drive to the store. And our last and final point is practicality. Is 3D printing parts practical? To address if 3D printing parts is practical, I would say it depends. Let's look at it this way. If you get into an accident and you damage the entire side of your vehicle, and let's say you have owned an auto body shop for the last 20 years, you don't really wanna get insurance involved, you don't want it on your record, you don't wanna to have to pay the deductible, et cetera, et cetera. For one, since you've owned a body shop for the past 20 years, you're gonna have no problem fixing the damage yourself and probably for much cheaper than you would if you were to take it to another body shop that you didn't own. However, let's say you are a wealthy real estate agent and you've never worked in body work your entire life. You would be willing to pay extra to have it done by someone who knows what they're doing. 3D printing is kind of like this scenario in that anyone can pick it up and with enough time and money, they can perfect and even get good at 3D printing. However, not everyone is going to be interested, nor are they gonna to wanna to spend the time or the money to learn how to do it when there is a easier, albeit more expensive way to go to the store and buy the part instead of printing it. The moral of the story is those who are truly interested in learning how to 3D print and design and use their 3D prints in functional scenarios are gonna get a lot more out of it than those who would rather go to the store and buy the part instead of messing with the 3D printer in the first place. In my opinion, 3D printing is a rewarding, more cost efficient and more hands-on way at producing parts organizational tools, and products that you can use to your benefit. When it comes to off-grid, the sky is the limit. And I truly believe a skilled designer and a 3D printer could be an extremely effective combo at confronting self-sufficiency on a whole new level. Before this video comes to a close, I have a few links in the description that you might be interested in checking out. Some are links to the products mentioned in this video, and you also find a link to our new website as well as Etsy where you can find 3D printed products that I now have available for purchase. As always, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.